It's been a couple of years now since millions upon millions of casual souls noobs, myself included, popped their From Software cherry with Elden Ring. Sure, many of us had tried the earlier titles, and at first we probably enjoyed the very satisfying feel of the gameplay, but the likelihood is that just like me, you couldn't find a way past Gundyr's inner goo monster, or Crystal the Hedgehog if you went off the beaten path. If this doesn't sound familiar, then you're a much better gamer than me. Very few people pick up their first Souls game and just get it, and most of us do go through this first time struggle. Like anything though, it becomes easier the more you practice, and in the case of Souls games, incredibly rewarding and satisfying too. But in those dark and early days, not all of us had the inclination to stick with games that forced you down a linear path of difficulty spikes. Sekiro in particular really ramped up the debate about whether all video games should include an easy mode when that came along. So along came Elden Ring, and all of its perfect review scores, and if you're like me, all of your co-workers who wouldn't shut up about it. So you try it out, and after being delighted by the inclusion of a tutorial area, you soon find the Tree Sentinel. <laughs> What's happening? No! But you also find all of that lovely empty space all around him, and the incredible realisation that you don't have to fight him right away. <laughs> here, 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 here's your power. <sighs> Elden Ring might not have given us an easy mode outright, but it did give us a staggering amount of accessibility through the simple addition of choice. When you reach a big old scary boss, you don't have to fight them right away. You can do something else, and for so, so many of us, this is what opened the door. I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. So, after all of this endless praise for Elden Ring, it begs the question, should you go back and play older From Software titles when you're done? Yes! Yes, a million times yes! Absolute no-brainer. In this video I'm going to look at Dark Souls 3, because mechanically this is what Elden Ring is the closest to. Now the thing with these games is that they're all brilliant to some degree or another, and a lot of us have got some pretty strong feelings about them. Now I'm sure there's going to be plenty of comments telling me I'm wrong about one thing or another, and that is totally fine. These are just my opinions and it is a-okay to have yours, and I genuinely love to read about them in the comments. Unless you're going to be a dick about it, because nobody likes that guy. On the surface of it, Dark Souls 3 and Elden Ring are very similar in how they play. They're about the same speed, with almost the same controls. One example being that you don't have a dedicated jump button in Dark Souls 3, but you can still jump. This is one of several areas where Elden Ring just floods the playing field with choice. The weapon variety it offers you is simply unmatched, and this applies doubly so to weapon arts. Meanwhile over in Lothric, the Cellsword Windblades are a hell of a starting setup for sure, but nothing can top the Uchigatana wielding samurai as far as I'm concerned. You're an unstoppable bleed beast right out the gate. Or you could even try the Astronomer, which is about as close as you get to starting a Souls game with a machine gun. The further you get into these adventures, the more stuff you get to play with. Dark Souls 3 does give you cool spells like Soul Arrow, but Elden Ring gives you stuff like this. Does this mean that Elden Ring is better? No, it just means that there's more of it, and you can also take this to mean that Dark Souls 3 presents more of a challenge. There's still tons of variety in how you play, but as the areas are nowhere near as big, it's tougher to get away with things like ranged combat, and there are no spirit ashes to draw fire either. And on that subject, you can't always summon an AI companion to help in boss fights either. And can you imagine trying to ride Torrent through Dark Souls 3? It'd be like trying to take a horse on the motorway, or freeway, if you drive on the right. Elden Ring wins the gameplay round for sheer variety and being slightly newer, but mechanically the two games are still extremely similar. When you finish your journey in the lands between, you can absolutely take on Dark Souls 3, and it will be nowhere near as jarring as if you decide to play Dark Souls 1 first. Exploration has always been key in Souls games. Interconnected levels that loop back and around have always been a cornerstone of how these games are built, and taking that lift from the first church bell right on back to Firelink Shrine was and always will be peak gaming satisfaction. Adventuring in this way has always been punishing and rewarding in equal measure. You might find some lovely twinkling titanite, 
but you might also have to deal with disgruntled woodworkers first. Now Elden Ring once again throws a bucket load of choice at you. You can go pretty much wherever you damn well please right from the start, and you've got a good chance of finding cool items or interesting NPCs, as much as you have finding massive trolls or hyper-violent lobsters. But, it's when you start to explore the hidden catacombs that the cracks start to appear. They reminded me a bit of the Uncharted missions in the first Mass Effect, more than a little bit copy and pasty. I still had fun here, don't get me wrong, but the thrill of discovery loses a bit of its shine when you open up yet another stone catacomb and think, gee, I wonder how many of those lovely war goblins I get to fight this time. One place that really rocked my belief system is the Halig Tree area. See, on my new game plus one run that I'm saving for the Erd Tree DLC, I really wanted to fight Melenia again, because apparently I hate myself. The thing that got me about the Halig Tree area was that it was a fantastic place to visit for high level upgrade materials, but that was mostly kind of it, and I didn't really need them in New Game Plus. Now, I've never made an open world game, and I can see the argument for restricting the spoils in an optional area to be mostly optional too, and I really don't mean to complain about elements of repetition in an otherwise expansive and awe-inspiring game. The point that I am trying to make though, is that in going back to a more linear style of Souls game, you won't lose as much of that freedom as you think you will, you'll just experience it in a different way and to a different degree. The Cathedral of the Deep is a brilliant example of an area that will really punish your missteps, and time and again you will find yourself deeper down the rabbit hole and further away from safety, but eventually all roads lead back to the chapel at the start. So whilst this is a huge area, by the time you're done you will know where everything is, and revisiting any of it, because this is where you will eventually be able to respec, will make you feel pretty damn smug about this. Okay, so, boss fights in Souls games are iconic. They're usually a big part of any conversation between Souls fans, and we all have our favourite memories. Not all that shockingly, Elden Ring has the most bosses. Very possibly, more than all the other Souls games put together and some of them are pretty damn vicious, especially in their second phases. However, a lot of them are a bit on the generic side, and you will experience a few reskinned repeats. Sure, you have the likes of Melenia and General Radan, but also probably like at least 10 of this dude. In all of my Souls experience, four bosses stick in my memory more than any other, for sheer challenge and the experience I had with them. One of them is of course Melenia, which I'm sure I don't need to explain here. Another was from Bloodborne, so fire into the comments if you want to try and guess which one, but my other two are from Dark Souls 3. That's right kids, 50% of my Souls boss stories come from this game. You want to know if Dark Souls 3 is worth your time? To this I say to you, Nameless King. What's that? You want to know the other one? Oh, that would be the Dancer of the Boreal Valley. Before her I had never known savagery like it and whilst I don't worry about her too much anymore, damn, I still get chills. So it's safe to say that not only is Dark Souls 3 worth your time, but highly recommended if you're a newfound Souls junkie Jones in for another hit. But in recording footage for this video and researching all of this, something dawned on me and I had to ask myself another question. Why did I find Dark Souls 3 so much easier to go back to than Elden Ring? I mean, overall I find it to be a harder game. I did have a partial save that I was able to jump back into. It was just before the Crystal Sage, who by the way took me 5 attempts to beat when I first jumped back into the game, even though they are so unremarkable compared to later bosses. Now admittedly this was after several months of not playing any Souls type game really, so I was a little rusty, but still. If I'd gone for Bloodborne first, I highly doubt I would have struggled this much with the Cleric Beast. Unlike Elden Ring, I couldn't really go and explore somewhere else for a bit, and I couldn't go and grind a suicidal boulder for an hour to get stronger. I just had to learn and adapt, and when I did put the Crystal Sage in the ground, it made me so happy. I played for another hour, and the muscle memory very soon came back. Those Abyss Watchers never stood a chance. I find Elden Ring a lot easier to start from scratch, because I have a new character path I like to do that sets me up with some easy runes and some decent equipment. It's what to do after this that presents the problem. 
Other open world games are rammed with markers and story beats and conversations, sure, but the trade-off is that you at least have a natural kind of progression path. Whilst Elden Ring in many ways gets things right by giving you complete freedom and not bogging you down in dull quest design or bombarding you with endless drivel. You are fated, it seems, to die in obscurity. Okay, it mostly doesn't do this. This can all create a problem on replay. The thrill of discovery isn't there once you've already discovered it. In Dark Souls 3, whilst you do have some freedom in how to approach your journey, like how when I loaded my old save, I could have gone to the bit with the torches instead of the Cathedral of the Deep first, you're otherwise on a linear path with a set journey and objectives. Apart from Arch Dragon Peak, there aren't really any optional areas in Dark Souls 3. So to put it another way, I didn't have a crisis about where to explore or what to do, and I was okay with it. So I'm going to close this point out by saying that not only is Dark Souls 3 worth playing after Elden Ring, I also consider it to be essential if you're looking to get that real Soulsy hit. And there you have it Souls fans, my take on whether Dark Souls 3 is worth it after playing Elden Ring. I am still planning to do a video focusing purely on the Dark Souls 3 DLC, but it takes a while to get to the end game, and I am working on a few videos simultaneously, so please bear with me on that one. If you've enjoyed this video, please do consider giving it a like, and maybe even subscribing to my channel for more gamer content. I'm on the socials too, so follow me there if you'd like. I'd love to talk to real people instead of musky Zuckerbots. And please do fire into those comments your favourite boss memories from the Soulsborns. Thanks very much for watching guys, you're awesome. See you on the next one.